I'm Girija Narlikar. I'm a director of engineering in Instacart Ads. And today I want to talk to you about how we are creating a fully personalized grocery store in Instacart, right? So let me um, start. Jigyasa, uh, tell me what is your favorite aisle in a grocery store? Pasta, okay, all right. Um, I like um, nuts and snacks. So let's imagine that Jigyasa is walking into her neighborhood grocery store and she uh, sees an abundance and variety of pasta and pasta related products, right? And things that would complement pasta, right? So everywhere she walks into the store, she's seeing more variety, more new products, and more offerings that she can discover. And I'm walking into the same grocery store and I'm able to see a large variety of nuts and snacks to fill uh, in my kid's lunchbox for the next day, right? So how do we get there and how, where does uh, ads come into the picture, right? That's what I'm trying to convey today. So this is really the gist of the talk. Imagine a grocery store that's fully configured to each and every uh, of your customers. Right, uh, so I'll start with a little bit of background because I know it's a space that may be a little bit new to most of you, uh, online groceries. Where are we right now and where are we headed? Uh, I'll also talk a little about Instacart as a platform and where ads come into play. And then I'll talk a little bit about personalized ads and then open it up to questions, okay? So let's look at online groceries. Uh, I don't know if you can read the numbers here, but the uh, curve on the top is where we are at right now. And we were projected before COVID to be the purple line at the bottom, right? So it's growing, and it's growing extremely fast now because of uh, the last two years, right? And uh, what we are seeing as a consequence of this is that we are probably going to hit something like more than 20% of all Grocery shopping will be online, and this is uh, about a $250 billion business in America alone, in the US. Uh, it's a much bigger number worldwide, right? So it is a huge market, it's growing, and it has grown much faster than honestly uh, we expected. And so now we are trying to uh, catch up to that scale and uh, provide more value. Okay, and while we are growing, the customer's ex expectations are also growing. So they definitely want a huge variety of selection, right? At least as much as what they would see when they go to a physical store. Um, not just groceries, but a whole uh, variety of other verticals. They want it to be affordable, obviously, right? You uh, you also want to be able to get all the discounts and all the coupons and everything that you can get in the physical world, but more easily, right? You want the experience to be seamless and simple, right? You do not want, definitely do not want ads to annoy you. You want them to engage. And you want the speed, the speed of delivery, the speed of being able to place an order, the speed of being able to find what you what excites you, that needs to be there too, okay? So all of these so place a pretty high demand on our system. So just uh, a little bit about Instacart as a, as a company. We're now in more than five and a half thousand cities with 500K uh, plus dedicated shoppers who are working with us. And what is really cool is that we are able to reach 85% of the US households, which in the grocery business is actually huge, okay? Um, I, I didn't realize that some of the largest grocery chains until I joined Instacart did not have uh, anywhere near national penetration. We are working with 700 plus retail partners and uh, about 65K stores across all these retail partners. And 300 of those right now have less than 30 minutes of delivery. That's growing. That's a demand we are seeing um, in the recent few months. Okay. In terms of the variety of stores, you're going to see a lot more than groceries. 
Okay, so this is, uh, you'll find a Bed Bath & Beyond, a Michaels for your art stuff, uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. The other day I just ordered uh, tennis shoes for my kid. Um, Best Buy for electronics. So it's really expanding. Anything that can come to you within a few hours, right? So where do ads come in, right? So um, let me, let me uh, start by saying that ads has been an integral part of Instacart only for the last year and a half or two, maybe. We've really grown on search ads. So you search for a product, you will see some sponsored listings, right? And uh, that has been a really, really uh, big growth story for Instacart. But we're also now coming up with new surfaces and new experiences. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, an insight. So the first screen is here is giving you savings, right? So these are savings, and these have been a traditional way for consumer packaged goods and advertisers to reach their customers. So we want to make sure that these are available on our platform. We also have a variety of special occasion events like July 4th, Super Bowl, Super Bowl was a big one on our platform, and, uh, and so on, right? We are creating destinations. So this is like an Oatly destination. O Oatly owns this space on Instacart and they're able to put their own content. Uh, more media types are coming, but they're able to put a lot of their own content uh, here to showcase their different products. And uh, finally, what I'm really excited about is an explore feed, which is live on our platform, where you can see lots more than uh, just products. You're seeing more content, you're seeing recipes, you're seeing um, blogs, and you're seeing lots of other exciting things. Okay, and if you think about an ad, a, a user's journey, uh, this is a pretty standard uh, uh, kind of uh, journey. You start with awareness, right? And then you go into a consideration, intent and purchase. All of these need to have personalization everywhere, right? Otherwise, the user is not going to be uh, happy to see ads. So that's what we are building in Instacart ads. And a lot of machine learning goes uh, behind the scenes to power that. So um, I'll just try to give you a glimpse of some of those. So what do we know on the left? We know what people are buying on our platform. We know what they are browsing, what they're searching for, what kind of product details they are interested in. So we know a lot about these users. And we obviously know a lot about these products because they have structured attributes that, that we are aware of. And from that, we can now begin to garner what kinds of ads would the users react to, even if they're not searching for them, right? So think of it like uh, an end of aisle display in a grocery store. You go to get your cereal, you go into the uh, cereal aisle, and at the end of the aisle, you see pasta, because Jigyasa went in there, right? And so uh, the end of aisle display is a huge display of pasta, which is only going to delight her, right? So those are the kinds of ads we're trying to now let you discover on our platform, right? The aha moments that you experience when you walk into a physical store. How do we do this? Um, we, we have a, a high dimensional embedding space that we build out of all our products and of all, with all the users, right? And we have a lot of data to train this space. It gets trained on a very regular cadence because we keep getting new products and of course new users. Uh, currently it's a two tar DNN and uh, it, this same embedding now powers many different surfaces on Instacart, okay? Not just ads. So even to show you which, uh, an ordering of the departments or it might be uh, new products that you might be interested in that have just come up or new kinds of sales, savings, all of those things uh, would involve personalization. And what I'm also excited about is how is this gonna affect uh, more than products? For example, recipes. 
right? There are many attributes of a recipe if you think about it. It's not just the ingredients that go into it, it's the cooking method. Is it uh, an ethnic food type? Does it take long to cook? Is it, or is it more of a convenience, right? All of these attributes can now uh, be used to figure out which users are going to like and be delighted by which recipes. And the reason ads is interested in this is because recipes are also a very traditional way for uh, advertisers to connect to customers. And back of the box recipes is just one example there. Okay. So lots of fun challenges ahead for the team. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of the modeling challenges. I heard a lot of those earlier today and uh, it would again be talking about very similar problems, but we, do, uh, we are looking at real time features. We are looking at uh, sparse data sets and, and uh, imbalanced uh, data sets and so on. All of those problems exist also in this space. Uh, but some of the things that are a little bit more unique to us are the fact that we don't really know who's behind each Instacart user. It's usually a whole family of very different tastes sometimes. And so uh, trying to figure that out and trying to figure out who is uh, behind each shopping uh, order is something uh, we have to kind of do in an implicit way. And customer preferences also do vary a lot over time. Uh, some people look at certain retailers as uh, maybe a special uh, occasion shopping and other retailers for their weekly stores, right? And so we need to figure out how users are looking at each retailer. They also change with seasons and in, in the face of savings. So all of these things are uh, kind of moving targets for us. We have a lot of cold start problems. Uh, we have new products. We, as we grow into non-grocery verticals, we have a lot of new verticals that we have very little data on. And we have... a always a growing customer base. And so we have, of course, cold start problems on users. Um, another thing that we are uh, working very hard on is trying to understand what do our advertisers want out of Instacart? What are they trying to do? What are their goals? Because this is a fairly unique platform for them where they can see the entire customer journey all the way to the sale and uh, be able to track that for, for each trip to Instacart. And so we are still working with our advertisers to come up with uh, goals that we can uh, work on together. And then um, recipes, we are looking at how to customize them for your dietary preferences. So we only have a certain limited set of recipes. If we wanted to then configure them and personalize them to each user, there are different ways of doing that too. So these are just some of the problems we're working on. And um, there's, a, there's a blog out there, I, I left a pointer here, but definitely reach out, we're hiring, we're looking for uh, uh, really uh, people who are interested in working on fun machine learning problems. Thank you. <laughs>